Welcome to King of Kings on this seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Since the beginning of time, God created rest for his people. Remember, after the six days of creation, on the seventh day, God rested. And the reason he did that is to teach his people to find rest in him and him alone. In Jesus, then, we focus today on the fact that we have rest for our burdens and rest for our battles and rest that lasts forever. Our opening hymn for this morning is hymn number 288. We'll sing verses 1 through 4. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love him and to serve him as his dear children, but we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all of your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. Now may God give you the strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
may be seated. The first lesson for today is recorded in the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. God promised Moses that his very presence would go with him as he led God's people, and he himself would provide rest. Moses said to the Lord, You have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways, so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, There is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock, and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand, and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 145. We'll read it responsively. You can find it on page 5 of your worship folder. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. One generation will commend your works to another. The Lord upholds those who fall. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. The Lord is near to all who call on him. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. The second lesson is recorded in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. And here the writer reminds us that the rest that God gave his Old Testament people was simply foreshadowing the rest that would come to all of believers in eternity. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the gospel preached to us just as they did, but the message they heard was of no value to them because those who heard it did not combine it with faith. Now we who have believed enter that rest just as God has said. So I declare on oath in my anger, they shall never rest, enter my rest. And yet his work has been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. And on the seventh day, God rested from all his work. And again in the passage above, he says, they shall never enter my rest. It still remains that some will enter that rest, and those who formerly had the gospel preached to them did not go in because of their disobedience. Therefore, God again set a certain day, calling it today, when a long time later he spoke through David, as was said before. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest 
for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every enter to effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall by following their example of disobedience. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Happy are they who hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bring forth fruit with patience. Alleluia. Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel and also our sermon text is recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. Our Christian faith connects us to Jesus so that we might learn from him, and what we learn is that he and he alone provides rest that lasts throughout this life and into eternity. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. The hymn of the day is hymn number 419.
Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our hearts are restless, O God, until they find rest in you. Amen. Dear fellow believers, in search of rest, certainly rest from the burden of our sin, but rest from all of the burdens of life as well. In 1912, a scientist named Douglas Mawson set out to explore an area of Antarctica that was at this point uncharted. He and his group got 300 miles away from their base and they ran into some trouble because one of the guys fell over a cliff and he took along with him the entire sled and all the dogs that were pulling it as well as most of their supplies. Because they would knew, knew it would take almost their entire time, it would be next to impossible for them to get back to the base in time for them to catch the ship that would carry them home. They turned around right away. And along the way, they endured starvation and frostbite. Frostbite so bad that their hair fell out and their skin fell off, even the bottom, the soles of their feet fell away. And along the way, that was compounded by the fact that Mawson himself fell into a crevasse and he was hanging there by nothing but a rope and in that kind of condition he had the strength to pull himself out of danger. By some miracle they arrived back at the base only to find out that three hours earlier the ship that was going to take them home had already left. Now, I didn't get the details of how this was possible, but somehow he got a message to his fiancée, and in that message, it had no words of self-pity, no words of despair, no words of complaint. It said simply this, deeply reg regret the delay, only made it to the hut. Can you imagine being in a situation like that? I don't think that I would have had the strength to continue. I don't think that I would have had the strength to endure. One thing after another, piling up on top of you, insurmountable circumstances, and yet don't sometimes we feel like that? Yeah, we're certainly not stuck in Antarctica. Antarctica. We don't have to deal with the soles of our feet falling off because of frostbite, but sometimes don't you feel like that, that things in life keep piling up on you and the burden gets heavier and heavier and difficult to bear? There's some real good news for you here today in this gospel lesson. Your Savior comes to you and He tells you, come to me, all you who are burdened, and I will give you rest. Find your rest in Jesus and Jesus alone. That's the lesson he's going to teach us over and over in today's text. That word, come, when Jesus says, come to me, that's the word we use in a couple of different ways, right? So if I say to my daughter, Madeline, come here right now. She knows the conversation probably isn't going to be very pleasant, right? But we also use that word in this way. If I were standing out shaking your hands and you were leaving this morning and you said, Pastor, would you and your wife and your family, would you come to our house? Please come and sit down and enjoy a meal with us. That's totally different, isn't it? It's a word of gracious invitation. And when Jesus uses that word, come, in this text, that's exactly what he's saying to us, lovingly and tenderly beckoning to us, come, come to me. He's telling us, stop living the way you're trying to live and instead live in a far better way. It's the same kind of invitation that we're going to hear from the king when he comes on judgment day and he calls to his believers, come, you who are blessed by my Father, 
Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Jesus says it today. We're going to hear it again at the last time. But until we hear it on Judgment Day, as we walk through this life and as the burdens pile up on us, Jesus tenderly and graciously invites us to come to Him. In the verses just before this gospel lesson, he was taught, Jesus was talking to the people to whom He ministered in Galilee. And Jesus preached a lot of sermons there, and He did a lot of miracles, and yet they rejected Him. And He says, woe to you. If the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be far more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. It shouldn't surprise us, though, that even though Jesus preached right there, they saw Him face to face, they heard His words with their own ears, they saw the miracles that backed up the message, it shouldn't surprise us that people rejected Him and His forgiveness because that's what we do. That's what we do by nature. And so I have to ask you, do you spend any of your week rejecting the forgiveness of Jesus? Sounds kind of strange. But are you foolishly piling up a day after day of unrepentance thinking that you can continue to live in a particular sin just one more day. Well, let me ask you, if today was the last day, then what would come of you? If today were the last day, what would be the outcome? Jesus would say, woe to you. And so, turn to Him. Find your rest in Jesus alone. Turn to Jesus who graciously invites you. Dump all your sins on me. Dump all your sins on me and I will carry every bit of the weight to the cross. In Matthew 23, Jesus was talking about the burden of a different kind. He was talking to the people about their spiritual leaders the very leaders who were supposed to be providing them with rest. Jesus says, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, so you must obey them and do everything they tell you. But do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. The Pharisees, the teachers of the law, they were supposed to be the ones leading people to Jesus and the Savior to find rest, but instead they were putting the yoke of burden directly and squarely on the shoulders of those people. They were telling them, you got to pull harder. But Jesus says to them, woe. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, You shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. I really have to encourage you, pay attention to the Savior's words here. Because carrying our own burden is something that every single one of us tries to do at times. We think, if I just pray a little bit more, If I just read a little bit more of the Bible, if I just open up my wallet, give a bigger gift to the Lord, if I just try harder, then I'm going to find relief for this burden, then I'm finally going to be able to quiet this conscience that screams at me in my head. Then I'm going to find a little rest for my soul. Woe to you. Woe to you if you try to carry that burden because it will crush you just as surely as it crushed Judas. 
crushed him to the point that he took his own life. Jesus says, no, come, come to me, and I will give you rest. Now, I know that there are some people sitting out in the pew today who are thinking to themselves, Pastor, that sounds beautiful. That sounds wonderful, and I wish those words could apply to me, but, Pastor, you don't know. You don't know that I'm the one that has created the burdens in my life. I'm the one that has piled those things upon my shoulders by one bad decision after the other. It would be great if I could believe that I could find rest in Jesus, but I'm too far gone. There's a little word that Jesus says that makes all the difference in the world. He says, come to me all. Come to me all who are weary and burdened. What that little word means is that Jesus promises for every single one of you, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how great your guilt, all means this promise is for you. Well, sometimes the load that we're dragging around has nothing to do with our sinful actions and our poor decisions. Sometimes the burdens that we carry are simply because we're living in this world corrupted by sin. Maybe your spouse has gone to heaven ahead of you, and you can't seem to live this wor in this world without them. It seems like much too much to bear. Or maybe your granddaughter was born months before she was supposed to be born, and she has spent her entire time, weeks here on this earth, struggling just to stay alive. That weight piles up on your shoulders and it makes you buckle in the knees. Or maybe it's just that the changes that come from having another child in your life and now I have all these new expectations, all these new stresses, and I'm fearful of what the future may bring. That has a way of wearing us down. And I don't know if I hit the one for you, but you know what your burdens are. And you know how heavy they are to carry. Whatever it is that makes up the load on your shoulders, we all look for ways to relieve the burden. And Satan would like nothing more than to take us and to turn us away from the only one in whom we find rest to someone or to something else. If I just make a little bit more money, then all of the final financial pressure will be released. If I just numb myself up with alcohol, then I'm not going to have to deal with my problems. Or maybe if I just make my schedule so busy and only focus on the one thing that's right in front of me at the moment, then I won't have to feel so burdened. But what happens when you make more money? It always seems like there's another bill coming right on top of the rest of the stack, doesn't it? When you sober up, have your problems disappeared? Absolutely not. And now they're even worse. When you make yourself so busy to try to distract you from your other obligations, don't you increase your stress load because now you're even more busy? And Satan wants to drag you down in that. He wants to rob you of the peace that Jesus supplies and the rest that he provides. So Jesus says, don't go looking for rest in other things or in other people. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You can't ignore your problems. You can't drink them away. You cannot schedule them into oblivion. But you do have a Savior who takes them away. For all those times that you've tried to deal with your burdens by looking to someone or to something else, Jesus says, I am your Savior, God, who always looked to my heavenly Father 
for strength and always came to Him in prayer. For every single time you tried to carry the weight of your own sin, Jesus says, I put it on my shoulders. I literally carried your cross to my death, and I paid for them in full. For all those times when you've tried to pay for your burdens by trying harder or by feeling more sorrowful, Jesus says, I felt the crushing weight of your sin. I felt the sting of the whip. I felt the pain of the crown of thorns all for you. (coughs) Jesus carries all the weight. Jesus lifts every single bit off of your shoulders. Jesus is the one who says, I will drown your sins and your burdens in the washing waters of baptism. I will refresh you with the very food of my body and my blood given and shed for you. I love you. I love you. In spite of who you are, And knowing full well every single thing you've done. And I give you rest for it all. In the later verses of this text, Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. At first, when I hear Jesus say that, it seems to me like he's saying, we're going to pull this load together. Take my yoke upon you. A yoke is something that is burdensome. And a farmer, what he does is he'll find two animals of equal strength and he'll put the yoke over their head. And they have to be of equal strength in order for that yoke to work properly. That's not Jesus' point here. He's not asking you to pull a thing. In fact, he's telling you, I'm going to pull all on my own, but we are, in fact, yoked together. We are tied to one another by faith. When you go through your struggles, when you deal with your problems, when you feel those things coming on you in your life, I am right by your side. I'm with you every step of the way, and I'm going to do all the pulling. Rest sounds wonderful. And all of us are looking forward to that rest that's going to come to us in heaven, aren't we? But you don't have to wait till you get there. You have rest right here and right now. As every single one of those struggles comes to you, you have His promise that He is tied with you. You have His promise of His strength in word and sacrament to endure. And every one of those things that comes upon you and comes upon me comes with a promise of God. He's going to use them for our good. He's going to use them for our blessing. And somehow He's going to use them for His purpose to get us to a place where there are no more burdens. And where that rest will be uninterrupted for all eternity. May God grant you the strength to daily live in that rest that you can only find in one person, Jesus your Savior. Amen. The peace of God that transcends all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Confess with me now your Christian faith using the the words of the Apostles' Creed on the top of page 7. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We now respond to God's rest by bringing a portion of our blessings and returning some of them to Him. If you haven't already done so, please take a minute and sign the Friendship Register and pass it down to the other people in your row. Please rise for prayer. O Lord, our God, You are wise and powerful, good and gracious. Your mercies are new every morning. Each day You open Your hand and provide for the needs of Your children on earth. We praise You for every grace and blessing. Strengthen Your church and all the world. Let Your comforting message of salvation in Christ Jesus be proclaimed to troubled souls everywhere. Use our ministries and offerings to extend your healing and your hope. Through your Son's humility, you have revealed salvation to us because sin burdens us and the troubles of the day weigh upon us. Take away our sin and give the rest you have promised to your people. Fill us with the peace that our weary souls crave. Give us the virtues of sympathy, patience, fairness, and purity. Keep us far from the weaknesses of selfishness, envy, stubbornness, and pride. Keep us from a quick temper and from a disregard for the feelings of our fellow human beings. Help us to manage our anger with the same calmness and self-control which you showed under trying circumstances. Gracious Father, we pray boldly as Jesus taught with the confidence that you will hear and with the faith that you will respond for our welfare. And we join in praying the prayer that he himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We'll sing hymn number 765. It's on page 8 of your worship folder.
O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation and bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated. We'll close our worship with hymn number 288. We'll sing verses 5 and 6.